In this episode, we're actually going to be building, I wouldn't call it a modification, but an add-on for our Harbor Freight blast cabinet. So just very recently, as in the last couple days, I've been sandblasting a lot of parts for several projects to get ready for paint or some other coating. While I was there for an extended amount of time, it got very, very hard to see into the cabinet, even though I've got a um, very bright LED mounted inside that cabinet. There it is. Um, got really hard to see. And I noticed that the blast media was getting, for the most part, pretty fine. And that's the problem with these cabinets if you don't have any sort of dust collection or evacuation system. When you blast the metal, whatever it is, metal, plastic, wood, I think I've had all that in there. As the medium or media wears down, it gets finer and finer to the point where it really doesn't do anything and it just swirls around in there and creates a cloud and you can't see squat. It's already hard to see in those cabinets, but you add that cloud, that dust cloud, and it's even harder to see. We're gonna to attempt to do this. Uh, there's no guarantee that this is actually gonna work. I've kinda of looked at a few videos, a few pictures online, and some evacuation systems or dust collector systems, and we're gonna to try to roll our own here, and it's gonna be pretty basic. We're going to use a couple of these five gallon buckets from Home Depot, a couple 3D printed parts. Yeah, it's pretty basic. Of course, I'm going to put a link to everything we use in the description below, all the buckets and even the links to the three files that we printed. One bucket isn't quite enough, so we're going to need two buckets to give us enough volume and space for the the cyclone action to actually do its job. So we're going to start by cutting the lip on one bucket, cut the handle off. So fingers crossed, uh, let's get to cutting a bucket. Next, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove this lip, go to the second lip so that this bucket will fit inside of the lip on the first bucket. Yeah, that's right. Well, you guys know I try to be as honest as I can with you um, during these videos. The little breakaway <laughs> box cutter just really wasn't cutting it, kept snapping blades. So I swapped out for the big guns. And kind of made a mess of the cut. It kind of got away from me. But now we can actually use our cutter. And what we're going to do is we're going to get that burr off there so that we get a nice seal. Just go all the way around, kind of hold the blade at a 45 and just scrape it off. Once you get it all fitted together, it should look like something like this. We need some way to introduce vacuum and the debris into our bucket setup. We want the debris to swirl around and create that cyclone, and that's where this guy comes in. So what we're going to do is this will actually attach here, and as you can see, it kind of brings it in so that any debris that comes in will travel around the sidewall and then cyclone down and drop to the bottom. And then for our actual vacuum source, we want that at the top, away from all that dust. That's where this part comes in. It's just a flanged kind of port. And we'll trace the inside of that, cut our top bucket for that, and just using some basic hardware with some washers to kind of distribute some of the load. We'll attach that. Same thing for attaching this. And what we need to do is when we get this where we want it and we'll attach it with the screws, we need to cut out the bucket 
to match that teardrop shape. So after you get your bucket cut and your 3D printed parts installed, it should look something like this. And you're going to place this bucket back onto the first bucket and then that completes the actual cyclone portion of this build. Next we're going to talk about the actual vacuum source. I didn't want to spend a lot of money, well, I already have spent a lot of money. I have a nice rigid shop vac, but if you guys have ever looked at the prices of those or bought one, you know it's, it's a couple hundred bucks. Well, I don't want to burn one of those up I'm trying to suck up some sandblast media. So what I did do was while I was at Home Depot picking up the buckets, I picked this up. It's their bucket head shop vac. So really all it is is the vacuum portion and you drop it down on top of one of the five gallon Homer buckets and that's your vacuum. I went this route because this was really cheap. If I burn this up I don't feel bad. Yeah, let's put this together and then we'll attach everything and we'll give it a test. Then we need to go from here to our blast cabinet. Um, yeah. This is way smaller than that. I also don't know why I didn't notice that before. Just have to use the 3D printer real quick and I'll be back. Came up with this. Uh, link to this down in the description. And I forgot that Code Makes It Go had actually 3D printed one of these for us before. And uh, for the blast cabinet side. So we'll probably have to use that. And all I did was find the same thing on Thingiverse and printed it on my 3D printer. Well there it is all hooked up. We go from our vacuum source up to the top of our cyclone dust collector and out of that port on the dust collector up to the cabinet. So now the only thing to do is fire up the vacuum, fire up the blast cabinet, and see how much of an improvement it made. Alright, now that we know that, that works, let's uh, fill up the air compressor and turn the vacuum on and Blast some parts, see if it's any better. At that angle you could tell, uh, but I could tell a huge difference inside the cabinet. Um, a lot easier to see. Uh, you still see some stuff kind of wafting around, but it immediately gets out of the way and you can see through the glass.
evacuates the cabinet so that we can see what's going on and gets the real fine grit stuff out and drops it into that vortex chamber just like it's supposed to. Uh, there was actually some crap that was coming off the parts that are in there that ended up in the bucket and there was absolutely nothing in the vacuum bucket. That's a solid win. I mean it works. What else is there to say? Uh, we don't have much in it at all. I think these buckets are less than four bucks a piece and if you have a 3D printer the cost of a few grams of filament and some time to print it and then a vacuum source. I'm sure most of you guys have a small wet dry vac. Yeah, that, that's a major improvement on this Harbor Freight cabinet. I do want to pose something to you guys. This cabinet, while it is functional, I don't know if you saw it when I was blasting, but I had to move the pickup tube several times. For those of you that have this cabinet, what other mods have you done to improve its functionality? Let's have a discussion down in the comments section. I'd like to revisit this cabinet at some point and do some more modifications to it or add some more accessories. So, uh, yeah, we'll let the comments section kind of dictate where we're going to go next with this Harbor Freight blast cabinet. That's it for this one. Until next time, guys, get up, get out there, and do it.